Hey everybody, I'm Sarah with our Furniture Flipping Adventure. Welcome back to another video. Today I have the bottom part of a hutch that I've decided to split into two and do separately. So we're going to start with the bottom today. This piece has a laminate-like top and some scratches and dings, but we're going to be giving it a makeover. And if you don't like gold, you should probably click away now because I'm pretty sure this is going to have some pretty fantastic gold details by the time we're done with this. So let's go ahead, get started, and get flipping. All right, I'm going to start with getting my piece really clean. I've got my degreasing crud cutter that I normally use, and I'm going to be cleaning inside, outside. And while I'm at it, I'm going to be taking the hardware off and putting it all together in a basket so I don't lose them because you lose the hardware stinks. This guy has all its hardware which is awesome. I don't have the expense of having to buy new pieces. So while I'm not 100% sure I'm going to reuse all of the same hardware, I'm going to keep it all together so I have the option to. And if I decide to replace it, I'll save it for another project later. I'm going to give this piece a light sanding. I got some 220 grit sandpaper and an orbital sander. For the front parts where it's a little more uh, detailed, I'm going to have to go in by hand, but on all the flat parts, I'm going to be using my sander just to make it go more quickly. I'm not looking to go through the finish. There's a few scratches and dings on top I'm going to smooth out and just get my surface nice and ready for paint. The top itself is rather slick, so I need to make sure that I give it a good tooth for the paint to hold on to so that it doesn't scratch off easily. The very back corner of this piece had a chunk that was missing, so I mixed up some Bondo and filled in that hole, scraped off as much as I could, and then I will come back through when it dries and sand it smooth. Right after that, I'll be heading into priming. Well, I won't. Actually, my husband did this part for me while I worked on another piece. He rolled the primer on and then used a brush on the drawer fronts to get into all those details. I just finished giving the piece a quick sand just to kind of smooth out the primer in some areas. There are a few little chunks, I think from where primer kind of gummed up and dried as Andrew was rolling it on. I'm going with white today, so nothing very exciting about painting white paint over a white primer, but I tried to convince myself to go with something a little more fun, like a very, very pale blue, but at the end of the day, white just sells better. So I have white, it's called, I believe, Tin White, and it's by Bear. I've never used a white from Bear, but I chose a very, very bright white because I'm going to be pairing it with some gold and I wanted it kind of be more stark to stand up to that gold.
I was very careful around the edges of these doors because I don't want paint on the edges where it closes into the cabinet. If I put a bunch of paint on those edges, they would probably stick when the doors closed, so I'm just avoiding getting paint there on the sides. I was really hoping to avoid bleed through, but the doors all got a couple specks here and there that came through the primer. So I went ahead and got a can of shellac and I sprayed over the entire doors, even where there wasn't bleed through, just to make sure that none would appear later in a spot I didn't spray and caused me an issue. So I covered all the door fronts. Here we are with coat number two. It goes on nice and easy like coat number one, but I had a four-year-old manager who <laughs> really wanted to get her hands into the paint, but she's not quite old enough yet. Normally I enjoy the process of hand painting my pieces, but I didn't enjoy all the arches and getting my paint all evenly smoothed on the door fronts. So I'm actually gonna be spraying my next coat of paint. Now, the main body of the dresser already has two coats on, plus that primer, and I was hoping that would be enough, but it's showing me that I'm gonna need a third coat, and these drawers only have one coat of paint on, but you may see that they're a slightly yellow hue, and that is the shellac. I put two coats on just to block in any more bleed through. I don't wanna deal with that again. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I've got my sprayer all set up, and I'm gonna give the whole piece another spray coat and hopefully that'll be good but we might have to do another one on the drawer fronts. Drawer fronts? Door fronts. Doors and drawers. We'll do another one on the doors and drawers. Now I have my new RZ mask that I'm going to be using. I used it for sanding as well and I really liked it especially in this hot weather. It's a little bit cooler and one of my very favorite things is I actually don't have to worry about killing my hair like I did in the last one. That may seem silly to you but I like to wear my hair up and in buns and face buns and, and trying to fit a big mask over that is not always easy. So I know that sounds like a silly thing, but. This guy's awesome. So I did end up doing two layers over the door fronts and just another layer on the body itself with the paint and then I came right back through after that was dry the next morning with my polyurethane top coat. Now this is a water-based polyurethane by Verithane and it is generally what I always use to top coat my pieces. I use two coats on the sides and then three or even maybe four on the top, I can't remember. But I let them dry in between and it took me a long time to get them to dry because it was so humid out. Now once my piece was all dry and finished, I got out my gold. My original plan was to put a whole bunch of gold all over this and on the arches, but once I got the gold handles put on, I decided it really didn't need that much and I was just gonna do that top stripe and then I added a little more, and then I added a little more, and you'll just have to see where I ended up. All right, so I am all done with this piece, and I have to say that I might be all done with gold, at least for the next couple weeks, with that clock that we did last week, and then this piece, I have about used all my patience for a tiny teeny detail brushwork and I really enjoy the look and the, how it glams up a piece but <laughs> my neck is so stiff from sitting on the ground yesterday for over an hour carefully brushing things on. So. While I'm pleased with how the piece turned out, I think I'm gonna take 
a little bit of a break from gold, so don't expect any to show up in the next couple of videos. Her numbers, this was actually, if you remember from the beginning of the video, a hutch, and this is the bottom part. The top part I'm gonna turn into its own little cabinet, so we're just not even gonna count that right now. The whole thing though, I only paid $8 for, and that is completely unheard of, at least for me. I got it at an auction, and I don't know Sometimes you just really luck out at an auction and nobody else has the room for it or they just don't care about it. And yeah, $8 for the hutch, about $20 in paint, primer, poly, top coat, and gold. So we're all into this piece for $28. So I'm excited to get pictures of it taken probably tomorrow and we'll be finished up with it then. Thank you all so much for joining me this week. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And I'll see you guys on Saturday with our very next flip. Until then, I'm Sarah with our Furniture Flipping Adventure. Bye.